Hi guys, my name is Tomcat and welcome back to Forza Horizon 4 and in this video I want to clear up some of the confusion around the Ford Mustang RTR in Horizon 4. Now again, this is the Spec 5 car and this is the reward for getting 50% complete on the summer season. Now what I've gone about doing to get this done is basically... I've done the weekly Forzathon challenge, I've done the Showcase Remix, and then Hilltop Vista, Queens Drive, Calton Hill, Midnight Madness, and Edinburgh Muscle. Now, what I would say is, I would say this is probably the most straightforward way to go about doing this. I don't think, I mean, you could do Summer Buggy Bash as well, I mean, that's kind of up to you, but you do not have to do the Seasonal Playground uh, playground Games Championship in order to do it, and you also do not have to do the Trial in order to do it. So remember that, you don't have to do those, and you don't have to mess around with these Forzathon Daily Challenges either, you just have to do the, again, the Weekly Forzathon Challenge, the Showcase Remix, and then uh, at least four... Of well, four or five, sorry, at least five of these single seasonal events. So keep that in mind when you're trying to unlock the RTR Spec 5. Now, now that we have the RTR Spec 5, though, it's time to go ahead and see what it's all about. Now, I've, I've touched on this car in Motorsport 7, but I haven't touched on it yet in Horizon 4. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this car... And we're going to take it around stock and see what it's like stock. And then we're going to build it into something ridiculous. So this, again, is the RTR Spec 5. And we're going to look into every single little detail of it. Because you can kind of get a little bit more close up with the details in Horizon than you can in Motorsport. Because you... You kind of have that freedom, whereas in, in Motorsport, it's not like you don't have freedom in Motorsport, but you do have a little bit more, like, I don't know, it, it, there's, there's a little bit more restriction in Motorsport. So, let's go ahead and back in here, so I get out of the road, and now I'm going to pull up the camera, and we're going to look around the car very, very carefully. So, these wheels, first off, these wheels are very, very cool. These wheels, I almost don't want to take them off the car. I mean, if I was going to take them off the car, I would have to be very specific about what I replaced them with. And if you zoom in on the RTR lights, you can actually see that there is a proper, like, pass-through there. You can see that that is, like, actually a hole. Now, if we zoom back out real quick, I do want to see if... Let's see, you can actually see the airbag on, like, you can see where they've labeled the airbag on the side of the seat. That's really, really cool. That is, that is properly cool. Now, I know we're not in the sun, but that still doesn't take away from the detail here. Now, I, say what you will about the fact that it's an automatic. I mean, it is the 10-speed, so, you know, you can kind of take or leave the fact that it's an automatic, but... Everything here, everything in the car is super, super detailed. I mean, you go through the center stack, you can go through the, I mean, even the oil pressure gauge, I mean, it's all like the oil pressure gauge, you know, the vacuum gauge, look how far it, oh my god, I never zoom in that far, but that's ridiculous. You can even see like, you can even see the detail on the screen of the trip computer, that is ridiculous. I mean, I'm sorry, but people that... If anybody out there says that Forza doesn't go to great lengths for detail, they don't know what they're talking about because the length they go through for detail in this game is absolutely ridiculous and tremendous. So let's drive this car now, see what it's like stock, and then we're going to go through and build it into... into pro Whoa, God. That is reverse. But we're going to go through and build it into something insane. Sounds so good. So what's interesting that I'm noticing already is if you have if you leave the stock trans in it, even with manual with clutch, you can still just like no lift shift it and as long as you do it quick enough, which I didn't do on the last one, as long as you do it quick enough, it will actually kind of shift like an automatic, which is kind of cool. It'll actually downshift super smoothly, too. If you clutch in and give it just a little blip of the throttle, it'll downshift super, super smoothly, and it sounds great. God. 
God, listen to those f backfires and flames. It really, really does sound so good. It's definitely one of the best sounding cars that I've personally dr like driven out of a lot of the new stuff recently. Wow, it will roast second. It doesn't do it doesn't do that big of a second gear burnout in motorsport. It doesn't even come close. That is nuts. Let's see how it drifts now. It's so weird being in sixth right now because I mean, you know, you know that you have okay, this thing has more steering angle in in Horizon than it does in Motorsport. It definitely does. It feels like it does. And it's way more willing to kick the tail end out. It drives differently. It genuinely drives differently. And that is one of the biggest things that I was curious about between the, using this car in Horizon versus using it in Motorsport. Because, my God, it is actually a little bit different. Let's see what we can do up this drift zone with a completely stock RTR Spec 5. Got to get down here, get a little bit of a run up. Whip it around. It is weird watching the watching the little arrow on the hub spin around once you actually like start driving you get this weird like green thing spinning. Come on. Be easy. Remember we're making stock power right now, but this thing is actually a god. It's super easy to catch though. I mean, it's not some sort of, like, Formula D car, angle machine, you know, massive, ridiculous powerhouse, but it'd actually be a good car to learn how to drift with because it teaches you how to manage your grip levels. And it actually teaches you the importance of clutch kicking. No, man, like, this car, this car is awesome. Especially, like, with, uh, especially with how detailed it is. And also, too, oh, that's cool. You can get a picture of it next to, like, you know, an, um like a 19 GT, like a standard 19 GT, it looks so much more aggressive than a standard GT. It really is a like a pretty, pretty car. Really is. And the flares just tie into the whole package so well. But without any further ado, let's go ahead and take it back to the shop and get a proper setup on it. So... We are going to do a drift build in a different video, but in this video, we are going to do a max power build, and we're going to see what it's actually like in terms of trying to get all that power to the ground in a straight line, and I don't know, I, like, I'm kind of, kind of thinking about leaving the 10-speed auto in it for now, and just building everything else up around it, because I don't think I'm going to necessarily need to change up the gearing, yet but if i do end up maxing out the gearing of the 10 speed i'll just put in the the six speed race gearbox and we'll mess with our ratios from there so let's go ahead and handle all the basic stuff first get much bigger brakes and you can do drift suspension you could do rally suspension you could do race suspension we're going to do race on this particular car we'll do a drift build on it again later once we once we have done this build, but the drift build will be a separate video. Um, the only thing we're not putting up to race in here is the transmission. And then tire-wise, we're going to go with a race tire. I almost went with a drag tire, but then I was like, nah. You could put a 335 up front, which is huge. You could do 335 up front and 355 in the back. And you actually have track width adjustment, which is kind of surprising because I didn't really look at this car and go, yeah, the track width needs to be wider. I, I never I, I never looked at this car and was like, no, nah, it's not wide enough. But I guess if that if you're one of the people that thought this car wasn't wide enough, you can actually mess with it. Now, I actually like the look of the Forza wing on this car. I actually think it looks really, really good because of the fact that it's proportionally correct to the rest of the car, I think. I think it makes it look really, really aggressive and really track-oriented. But... For this build, hmm, I, I have a feeling that this is gonna probably mess with our top speed. But you know what? We'll just tune it to we'll just tune it to speed. We'll just flatten the wing out. And then from here, if you wanted to swap the engine, you could. 7.2 V8, 8.4 V10, 5.2 V8. Yeah, let's wait. Did I say yeah, 7.2 V8? I was like, oh, I went to make sure that that wasn't a V12. 
So let's throw twin turbos at it and then now build the engine up all the way and see what we can actually get out of it once it's fully, fully built. And we'll get the exhaust, we'll get cams, we'll get everything. Wow, cams added 68 horsepower. That's a lot. Really freed up a lot of power. 146 from race turbos. 45 from the intercooler. Th that's this is gonna be this is gonna be powerful. 948 horsepower, 810 foot pounds of torque weighing in at 3,092 pounds. That's a really good power to weight ratio for a car this big. Really good. So let's install the setup. And it's not really a dedicated drag car by any means, but I'm really curious to take it to the highway and once we kind of flatten the wing out and tune it all the way to speed, we'll see what this thing is actually capable of. Now the dyno says its top speed is 223.2, but let's see if we... Mm, I'm not going to actually mess with the alignment right now. I, I just kind of want to see what it will do right out of the gate. Except for just a couple of little adjustments. A couple of little adjustments. So, arrow on the back is going to be all the way to speed. And let's see if that affects our top speed at all, actually. It made our 0 to 60 slower. Um, but our top speed, it, top speed got better. So, that's what I, that's what I kind of assumed it was going to do. So, right now, we'll leave the diff at 75-75. And I kind of want to see how this transmission handles all of that power. Because it's a lot. I mean, it's a lot of power. Biggest thing I'm curious about is, is it going to just, just hit the limiter? Wow, it spun, it spun its rear tires up until fifth. But again, to be fair, that's only like, that's like half of the gears in this car, so... You kind of have to retrain your brain as far as what you think of when you think of being in fifth. Like, most cars... Most cars end up being, you know, by the time you get to fifth, you're already, like, you're already gripped up. Even when you have, like, gobs of power. This thing, third, it's spinning. Fourth, it's laying rubber down, and at the top of fourth, it sticks. Come on! I will say, I know there's going to be a lot of people out there that are going to say, Oh, take the wing off! It's either ugly or it's hurting your top speed. And to be honest, the wing actually helps keep it a lot more stable at these high speeds. I mean, look how stable this thing is. Look how, look how flat it was going around that corner, even over 200 miles an hour. It does help. 228, 229, 230. And look how stable that is. Most cars would not be that stable. I'm not going to lift and see if I can go around this corner. Almost. Almost. Most cars in this game going that fast around that corner would not make it. Unless we're talking about some ridiculous, like, aerial atom or something. But no, this thing is really, really good. I mean, it's definitely a car that you should take a look at. No matter, no matter if you like Mustangs or not. I mean, it's definitely a car that I highly recommend. And even if you don't like Mustangs, trust me, this is a really, really good car, and it's well worth taking a look at. So, hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to click that like button. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of it, and if you are not subscribed yet, and you want to stay updated, make sure you click the subscribe button and click the notification bell. I'll see you guys next time. Talk to y'all later.